dear friends, this is Pastor Roy Olson speaking to you from the beautiful facilities of Apavia Ministries in beautiful Romania. I have a message that possibly will put a lot of pieces of the puzzle together regarding our Christian walk, faith, and if Christian life on earth has a goal, has a, uh, an epitome, has a destiny, a place to which we aspire, what would that be? You remember the Apostle Paul, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he hasn't arrived to a place where in his heart, in his soul, his experience he knew was available to him. But he said he continued to press toward the mark of what? Of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, what would that be? Well, come with me on a little journey and uh, uh, we'll begin our journey by turning to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. And here Jesus is uh, telling us of a place that he's going to prepare for us. This place is, uh, is in the Father's house. And in this Father's house there are many dwelling places, uh, mansions, uh, in the Romanian language, we say loquinza, a place to, to live, your place. And so Jesus is saying, uh, there are many places and uh, I'm going to prepare this place, a place for you, so that I'm there, but I want you to be with me there where I am. And you remember somebody said, well, Jesus, where are you? Now, Jesus could have responded many ways. Well, I'm planet on earth. I'm in Israel. I'm in Jerusalem. Maybe I've been in the upper room. But of all the responses Jesus gave, the, the response was, I am in the Father. That was his loquienza. That was his dwelling place. That was his mansion, so to speak. I am in the Father. And what Jesus is telling us here is, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, present tense, not where he will be, where he was while he walked on earth. I am in the Father. And he's going to prepare a place for us that where he is while on earth, there, we could be there also, implied, while on earth. Well, Lord Jesus, what in the world are you going to do with hammer and chisel and saw and axe to prepare a mortar or bricks? No, how is he going to prepare a place for us? Well, number one, he prepared the place for us by going to the cross. We say what he accomplished on the cross, we use this word, the vicarious atoning death of the Lord Jesus Christ. That basically means that he paid for all of our sin. And as a result of our faith in Jesus Christ, we stand before God clean, forgiven, white as the driven snow, uh, pure before God, forgiven. And Jesus went on to say what else he would do. He said, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. In other words, putting it another way, I'm going away so that the Comforter can be sent to you. And Jesus equates that, well, I will come to you. I will come to you in the person of the Comforter of the Holy Spirit. So here are two things that Jesus did. Number one, he went to the cross and he paid the sin question. What else did he do? Number two, he went to the Father so that the Holy Spirit might be outpoured uh, not just upon the church, but upon people, your sons, your daughters, 
your, your young men, your old men, visions and dreams, uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit in between these two eternal, significant, momentous events, the cross and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Jesus has prepared a place for us that where he is, there we may be also. Where was that place? Jesus was in the Father. Where does he want us to be? With him where he is in the Father. Uh, that's another way of saying abiding, is it not? But Jesus said, he that abideth in me and I in him, two things will happen. Number one, he shall bear much fruit. What's number two? It's that the fruit that you bear will remain. What does that mean? It will not be burned up like wood, hay, and stubble, but it will be of eternal consequence. Are we not guilty of running here and there and uh, making up programs and so on? Many of them good and well-intentioned and have some success. But Jesus' ultimate, not success, but fruitfulness comes from abiding in Him, being directed and led of the Holy Spirit in what we do, what we say, and of course who we are. And so two things by abiding in Him. Number one, your life will have significance, fruitfulness, and that fruitfulness will be of eternal consequence. And Jesus went on to say that I'm saying these things to you that your joy might be full. Indeed, does not the Bible say that in thy presence, thy God's presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes, that's where it's found. Not in the bar or in the street or some uh, addiction. No, in thy presence is fullness of joy. It doesn't get better than that. And at thy right hand, God is not against pleasure. God is the God of pleasure. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. True pleasures that deeply satisfy and do not need another hit the next day or in the morning or something of that name. No, 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 no. These are the deepest yearnings of the human heart that can be satisfied with nothing else. But being where Jesus is, is in the Father. And I think Moses perhaps had a glimpse of this when he wrote, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, the provision, the pleasure, the joy, the, uh, uh, the, the goodness. He that abideth in me and I in him, he that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so what are we aiming for? Well, the goal of the Christian life I present to you is not great success, but a life spent in the presence of God, along with the Lord Jesus Christ, being his obedient servant, submitted, yielded to him, with no plan, desires, ambitions of our own, but simply to be at his disposal. Here I am, Lord, at your disposal. Speak, Lord, and I will answer thee. God bless you. This again is your friend and pastor Roy Olson coming to you from Apavia Ministries in Romania. Until next time, God bless you. Goodbye.